Hello and welcome to episode 22 of season four. Gosh, time is flying. It's Vicky Midwood here. I am your host and you are listening to Raw Chatter, where we go down deep and dive into the depths of the stuff that keeps us stuck and prevents us from living the life that we want, having the health that we desire and feeling fantastic in our own body and as who we are as humans. If it's the first time you have listened to this, I want to say thank you and welcome. If you haven't subscribed, I would love you to do that. And if you do like the contents of what you hear today, it would be awesome if you could give me a like, maybe leave me a comment or share it with somebody who you may think will find it useful. So today's topic is all about insanity and why we love to stay stuck in the struggle. Now, that may sound a very strange thing to talk about, but let me share with you why I wanted to talk about this. So in the last week, I have been very fortunate enough to spend three days um, away from where I live, uh, seeing three different clients. Um, we have what I call VIP days. These are the days where I get the opportunity to spend a significant chunk of time with my clients without interruptions, without distractions, where we can go through some, some practical tools that will help them to cement some of the lifestyle and thinking changes, but also to help them to reconnect to their body and to also understand a little bit more about themselves um, in a way where it's easier to talk in their own environment rather than over Zoom. And so I've had the privilege to be able to do that this week. And something that comes up just about every time I start working with new people, but also comes up a lot because we don't forget some of the stuff that has been deeply ingrained is around food and the stories that we tell ourselves and how we are actually addicted to the struggle. Now, it sounds ridiculous, but here's what a lot of people don't necessarily understand about the way that our bodies and our brains work together. We are electrical beings. Your heart has an electrical current. Some of you may have, heard, have had an ECG. So we, we, we are electrical beings, but we are also hormonal beings, and we are also bacterial beings. So there's a lot of complex bits that make up us humans. I mean, we're quite amazing when you think about it, how we actually function. So we give off an energy, and we all do. You may have heard, uh, you know, if you talk to somebody, they, they've got a high vibe or they've got a really low vibe. What we mean is we talk about vibe vibration. It's like they're giving off this energy. And some people give off a very positive kind of high energy. And that follows through with the type of language that they use and, the, and the, how they hold themselves. And a lot of people would say that I'm quite a high energy person. I smile a lot. I use my hands a lot when I'm talking. I get quite animated and passionate. Right. And then there are other people who are very still and very calm and very monotone when they speak. And they're obviously thinking about the words that they choose and uh, quite serious. And so they give off a different kind of energy. And, and I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. But we also have a lot of bacteria. And bacteria in our gut, we have, we're covered in bacteria. And for those of you going, oh, bacteria, right? We, we all need bacteria. They are our friends. And this is why a lot of the reason why, not all of the reason why, but a lot of the reason why we're having so many more people reacting badly to certain viruses and and colds and getting really kind of robust, powerful symptoms that seem a little bit over the top for what it is, is because we have are started anyway to create an environment that is just too clean. And we need bacteria. Bacteria is good. We need it to survive. We have bacteria on our skin. We have bacteria in our mouths. Microbiome is a word some, some of you may have heard of. We don't just have a microbiome in our gut. We have a number of different microbiomes, right? So your mouth has one. Uh, if you're a female, your vagina has one. Your gut has one. Skin has one, etc. So 
we have a lot of bacteria and we need to take that into consideration when it comes to how we feel and how we function in terms of our health, the food choices that we make, how our body actually responds to stress and to the food choices that we make and the drink choices too, obviously. So there's a lot to consider. We also have got a nervous system and we have got hormones that correspond to our nervous system. And the reason I'm saying that is when we do anything, when we think a thought, when we move, all of these systems respond in some way, shape or form. And we elicit biochemical reaction, which leads to a hormonal reaction and a neurotransmitter reaction based upon the thoughts that we think. So if we're always thinking negative thoughts, if we are always calling ourselves names inside our own head, if we're always putting ourselves down, we are creating a corresponding response internally as far as neurotransmitters and biochemicals and hormones are concerned. And when you keep on creating this same cocktail, if you like, of chemicals, your body and your brain get used to it and therefore think that this is a requirement to your survival. So you're going to find that you are always looking for the negative, that you don't quite feel right if you call yourself clever or intelligent or bright or if you say something nice about yourself because that will elicit a di different chemical hormonal uh, response in your body that it's not used to. And it will go, oh, what is this? We don't recognize this. This is not familiar. This is unknown. Oh, we better quickly change that because we need to go back to what we know. So when it comes to change, and the reason I'm sharing this with you is because when it comes to change, we have got to recognize that it isn't just the behavioral patterns that, we're, that we need to change. And so many people try to change what they're doing around food. For example, trying to follow a diet to lose weight. I hate that term because what most of us want to do is lose body fat, correct? Not just weight. And what a lot of people don't understand that body fat and weight are not the same thing. If any of you have got bioimpedance scales that show you your visceral fat, your subcutaneous fat, your overall body fat, your muscle density, your bone density, your water, you will see that weight is made up of a number of things. So when you just jump on a scale and look at a number, that's not telling you anything. Right? It's a bit like your age. It's just a number. It doesn't really tell you anything. You may have expectations of what a, a I don't know, a 70 year old is going to look like and sound like. But that's based on social conditioning and maybe what you've seen in the past. But the reality is that 70 year olds across the globe are all massively different, hugely different. Right. I know a number of 70 year olds now who are so much more energetic, sprightly, great fun to be around um, than 20 and 30 year olds. So it it's a state of mind. It's a, it's definitely how you live your life. If you've always been physically active, then there's no reason why you can't continue to be into your 70s. My point being, age is just a number. The weight on a scale is just a number. It's what you attach to that number that becomes an issue. And this is what I deal with, with my clients who have disordered eating, body morphia issues, and this belief and it's powerful that if they just hit a certain number on the scales, all would be well in every single other area of their life. And the truth is, the majority of them, if not every single one of them, has at some point in their life hit this desired number. And guess what? their life wasn't miraculously all better. Nobody waved a magic wand over every other area and made their relationships better and made their business better and made their friendships better and made their bank balance better. It didn't happen, right? But the story attached to this weight is what kept them going and led them to believe that if I just hit this number, then everything else will be rosy. And that's just not the truth. But we stick to these stories we get attached to them and the more you repeat the same story 
in your head, the more your brain believes that it's true, right? Your, your brain will believe what you accept. Let me repeat that. Your brain will believe what you accept. So if you have accepted, for example, all carbs are fattening, and you've then repeated that a number of times, your brain just accepts that as the truth, even though it's not. Many people really don't understand that there is no one food in and of itself that is fattening, right? Because whether we store fat or not is not just dependent on the foods that we eat. It's not just dependent on the energy that we take in. It's dependent on your hormones and the messages that are sent within your body as to what to do with that food. It's dependent on your stress levels. It's dependent on how many chemicals and toxins that you have in your body. It's dependent on your hormones and how they're functioning. It's dependent on any medications that you may be taking. And the environment that you're in, the stress, how are you feeling with the people around you? So many things are going to affect whether your body actually is able to break down and utilize the food that you eat. And this is not just talking about calories. And this is not just talking about certain macronutrients, fats, proteins, etc. But the idea that just hitting this number and all will be well, right, is based upon a fairy tale, right? And that's the stuff that we need to help people to change because what we need to really be focusing on is how am I feeling? How am I functioning? What is my energy levels like? Now, what's cropped up in this last few days is that there's lots of language that comes out so automatically because this brainwashing, this diet mentality, the stuff that's been literally brainwashed into you via TV advertisements, via radio, via parents, via school teachers, by advertising hoarding boards, via the TV, right? When you keep seeing all of this stuff that is firing the same information, your brain accepts it. It takes it on as the truth. Whether it is or not, it doesn't matter. There is excellent marketing around alcohol, right? It is shown to you to be something that is a positive, that it helps you to feel good, that it helps you to relax, that you need it to feel a part of when you are going out with friends. If you look at any of the advertisements for alcohol, it's usually people smiling, having a good time, right? You don't see any adverts for alcohol with somebody sitting at home on their own with a bottle by their side, drowning their sorrows, because that's not a good advert, is it, for an alcoholic beverage? So advertising is done with psychology in mind on purpose, right? The food manufacturers, and I shared with you on the last podcast, uh, were oh, a lot of the big boys in, in food manufacturing were originally in the tobacco industry. And so they swapped one form of great advertising based upon psychology of, of how humans buy things uh, just from one area to another, Right, which means that they are advertising seemingly healthy foods to you that are actually not exactly like they did with cigarettes. It's no different. The thing is, if you don't know that, you are going to accept and believe that what you're being told is true. Right? Children's breakfast cereals is a is a prime example of this. They've got these great big flashes on the on the packets that say healthy whole grain, part of your five a day or whatever, right? And all of these things are flashed at you in colors and they put little cartoons on that appeal to kids and so forth. But when you actually look, the, basically what you're doing is giving your kids sugar, sugar and dessert for breakfast, if you like. But they want it because they've seen it and all their friends are having it. And it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge as a parent to be able to navigate this stuff, especially if you don't know any different yourself. So what I'm wanting to share with you is that there are a lot of myths that are going around that are keeping you in struggle, but also the thinking that goes along with it. So a lot of my clients are talking about I was good. And what they mean is I deprived myself, I denied myself, I restricted. And we've got this idea from the dieting world that if you can restrict and deny 
that equals weight loss on a scale that equals you get a tick you get a gold star if you've ever been to any of these slimming groups what what do they do when somebody's lost right there's some kind of reward isn't there there's some kind of accolade the people are pleased for you there's nobody going yeah but do you know that your body can gain and lose as much as two to three kilos in a day Nobody's saying that. If somebody's lost a pound or half a pound, they're like, yay, well done. And then when they put it on the next week, what happens? Not a lot. A question, did you stick to the diet? What haven't you done, right? It said somehow you've been bad. And this is how we get programmed into this, into this madness. Now, I'm all for community when it comes to this stuff, right? And, and I'm not saying that slimming clubs don't help some people. They absolutely do because you're not alone, right? And you're, you know, you're part of something. And we know that when it comes to doing anything on a positive to change how we think and feel about ourselves, doing it with other people is the best way rather than going it alone. But the messages that you're being fed are not healthy and they're not helpful. So I'm inviting you to look at your language. When you say, oh, I've had a good day food wise, what do you mean by that? Do you mean that I have honored my body and eaten foods that I know work with it that are nourishing? Or do you mean I have purposely avoided, restricted, denied myself certain things that I wanted? And that's just me putting it out there for you to, to think about. You know, do you talk about having a good day in terms of what you have or haven't eaten? Or do you talk about having a good day in terms of how many conversations that you've had that have been really good fun? How many activities that you've done that have made you smile? How many experiences that you've had? Because that is what we should mean when we talk about having a good day. Did I do the thing that I said I was going to do? Because for me, if I have my three intentions and I never set more than three things in a morning that I want to achieve because I want to achieve them and make sure that I do what I say I'm going to do. But when I have done what I've said I'm going to do, that's a good day. Some days it's only one thing and that's fine because if I do that one thing and I said I was going to do it and I've done it, that's a good day. So again, I'm inviting you to look at how do you judge a good day is it by food is it by restriction right or is it about actually living and enjoying life and doing things that matter because we can very easily get caught up in this diet mentality and then if we don't stick to what we said we were going to stick to in terms of food or restriction are you then getting a chemical hit because you can now be down on yourself and you can give yourself what your body was actually looking for you to give it, which is another hit of the chemicals it thinks it needs based upon the thoughts that you think to survive. In other words, every time you give in, your brain's going, ah, great, I can get my hit of dopamine and serotonin now because she's going to be really hacked off, she's going to call me names and I need that chemical hit. That's the chemical hit that helps me to remind myself that I'm good, I'm alive, I'm surviving. So this is what I mean when I talk about being addicted to the struggle. You are not just addicted to the pattern of the behavior of losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, telling yourself you've been good, you haven't been good, etc. You are actually addicted to the chemical hormonal response that gets elicited from the thoughts that you think that are negative, that pull you down, that call you less than, because your brain believes you need that to survive, which is why changing your language and doing it step by step and recognizing how you speak to yourself is the first step, because what you need to do is change, if you like, your chemical choice, your hit, um, and I kind of liken this to people who who are literally addicted to drugs, because that is what it's like it's getting blinded by the sunshine here, folks. Um, I hope you can still see me. So what we need to try and do is let go of the struggle language and start to embrace high fiving yourself when you do what you said you're going to do. Start to recognize that 
being good is nothing to do with food right you're not a child who needs a pat on the head because you did do or didn't do something should we celebrate ourselves when we did something yes yes me I did what I said I'm going to do high five absolutely but we don't need to talk to ourselves like children when it comes to whether we have not really not eaten a certain food or eaten a certain food we don't need to label foods good or bad right what we need to do is ask ourselves is this is this going to be helpful and nourishing for my body will it help me to feel better and energized and be able to get on with my day because that's what it's about does it mean that there's no place for fun foods fun foods mean things like chocolate and pastries and crisps and cakes and all of those things that are basically flour sugar and fat all mixed together of course there is a place for those right we you we utilize them when we're in company usually as a celebration or whatever but if you know that those are the exact type of foods that will send you into a spiral of focusing on food and feeling out of control then they are not fun foods for you they are not nourishing foods for you but they're not bad right they're not good they're just not for you and this is what I mean about changing the language and looking at the mindset that you may have been brainwashed with, but recognizing that if your way of speaking to yourself is always negative, is always pulling you down, is always thinking that you're not good enough, that you could do better, you are going to get addicted to that type of thinking because of the chemical hit that your body and your brain is giving itself. You need to switch it. And this is what I help people to do, because you can't switch if you're not even aware of it. And so much of this language, and this is what came out over the last three days, so much of this language comes out so automatically that my clients can't even hear themselves saying it. I have to pick up on it and just go, let me just repeat back what you've said. And they still can't necessarily hear the words that I'm hearing because it's so normalized. And so this is why working with somebody to help you to change and to be aware is so, so important because we can't see this stuff for ourselves. You've heard the saying, you can't see the wood for the trees. When you're in it, you don't know what you're doing, what you're saying. You're just kind of carrying on in the way that you normally carry on and not realizing that your thinking is actually having an effect on your feelings and your feelings will affect the food choices that you make, but also how your body actually utilizes those foods and whether they are able to burn them and use them and, and take out the nutrients and the goodies or whether they go into fat storage. And so you can't just look at this as one thing. And this is why going back to what I said, the insanity of repeating the same behaviors, of repeating the same thinking, of going, right, I'll just restrict harder. I'll just do more exercise. This time I'll be better doing the same stuff. No, you won't. You'll just make it even harder unless you get the awareness and the understanding of how your brain works, how your language works, how your hormones work, the stress response, what is happening within your body, because you need to look at everything. It's never just one thing. And your focus needs to shift from numbers on a scale and weight over to energy, mood, sleep, physical strength resilience and how you actually function on a day-to-day -day basis because when you focus on those things and not on numbers on a scale guess what happens your body will let go of the fat that it's been holding on to because often it's been holding on to it because you unknowingly have not been in a place to allow it to get released so if any of this has got you curious or you want to understand a little bit more about how I work, it is different to how so many other people work. And that's the reason why people come to me, because they've done all of the other things. And um, what I do is different. I go about it in a different way to anything people have ever done before. And that's why they get the results, not just for a short term, but for a lifetime, because you transform how you think and feel about food or alcohol or both and your body. It's a process, it's a journey, and it's one you can do on your own, but it's so much faster, it's so much easier if you do it with somebody who can help you to get more aware, to take responsibility, and to make the right changes at the right time 
for where you're at. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please do like, please do subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And if you feel, as I said at the beginning, that somebody you know may find this helpful, please, please do pass it on to them. I would love you to have a great day. And just remember, you only have one body, as far as we know, and one life. Take care of both. Enjoy it. Until next time, be well.